Hi, thank you for tuning into our channel. In today's video, I'm going to be uh, sharing with you some of the simple tricks that I have learned to becoming more water wise in a Southern California garden. And it does not mean ripping out every single plant you own and starting all over again. So let's get to it. I'm Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens and my first tip for you is just choosing the plants that you have wisely. So if you're adding new plants to your garden, understanding the areas that you're putting them in and what the surrounding plants need. Um, if you're starting new and adding some new things in, how to pick correctly. You really want to understand what the plant needs. It's not only important to know if it needs sun uh, or if it needs shade or what kind of fertilizer requirements it has, but you also want to understand what kind of water needs it has and then pair those things correctly. It's really important to have different zones. So if you have an area that has some more water hungry plants, you can adjust your irrigation accordingly for that. But if you have an area where the plants don't need a whole lot of water, it's really nice to add more plants that don't need a lot of water. So then that way you don't have to up the water levels just to make those few water hungry plants happy. So it's really, really important to understand those plants. You can always check the tags on everything. Of course, you can always ask us here uh, and we can tell you what things go well together and what their water needs are. So that's the first most important tip is understanding what your plants need so you're not over or under watering those plants. So the second tip I have for you might seem a little tricky or maybe something you're not super comfortable with but I promise it's really super easy and really important and that is to understand how your yard is irrigated. So a lot of people have automatic timers here in Southern California. They just kind of set it and forget it or they let their gardeners deal with it but it's really important to understand how often your irrigation is going, how long it's going and be able to adjust that according to the seasons. You should not be irrigating your yard year round the same way every single week. It definitely needs to be changed and adjusted according to the plants that you have, according to the seasons and what the rainfall is like. Uh, there's some really amazing smart timers on the market now that are really kind of cool. And those are sort of a set it and forget it kind of thing. Uh, you just pick the type of plant you have and it goes off the current weather. So it's always changing on its own. Those are a little bit pricey and they're not as common. Uh, so if you just have a regular irrigation timer, uh, I tell everybody go on YouTube, watch a really simple video on how to work your particular type of timer. And once you understand it, you will absolutely be a pro. So it's really important to be able to turn them off when we're gonna have some rain. Some of them have really simple buttons that you just press, it has a little rain symbol on it and it just stops it temporarily for 24 hours uh, to 48 hours. So that's really a great feature to have. Um, but you also wanna be able to understand what your zones are. So a lot of times if you had your yard landscaped, a lot of times the landscaper will give you a little map of your zones, which is really helpful. Uh, you might have to just run the irrigation and see where the zones are and make your own map, but that's a really important thing. If you have an area that has grass, it needs a different kind of watering schedule than an area that has large shrubs. Uh, if you have an area that you change out annually for different annual color, that's going to need very different water. So understanding your timer and how your timer works will really, really help you be incredibly water wise, which is super important here in Southern California. We're always dealing with drought. Uh, we're always dealing with a lack of water and you can be really smart and really, really make your garden super happy if you understand how to do that. Um, also understanding how your irrigation actually works, whether you have spray irrigation that pops up, whether you have drip irrigation, uh, whether you have under the ground drip irrigation, all those things are really important. I would say if you can, if you switch out your spray heads, the spray heads put up a lot of water, a lot of mist, uh, then you have a lot of that evaporating before it even gets to the plants. Uh, drip is a lot better because it's getting the plant right to the root zone. So if you're already there, great. If you're not and you need to change some stuff, it's actually really simple to do. Uh, it's very inexpensive and will definitely make it so you have to water a lot less and use a lot less water in your garden and make your plants even extra happy. So the third tip, which I think is really important and everybody can do in their garden, no matter what type of garden you have, is making your soil better. 
not all soils created equal. So we have a lot of gardens that have a lot of sand and the water's just gonna drain right through super fast and it's not gonna hold the water that your plants need. Uh, here in Southern California, we also have a lot of people who have a lot of clay soil. So that percolates down through really slow, makes the plants really unhappy because the water kind of stays stagnant. So adding organic material to your garden will make your soil much better and make your watering a lot easier. Uh, there's certain things that you can do uh, that work really, really well. And the biggest tip that I have is compost, compost, compost. It's the best thing you can do for your plants. It'll make your plants really happy. It'll help your water retention and make you have to water a whole lot less, regardless of what kind of soil you have. Uh, so I really recommend adding some compost to the garden at least once a year, about an inch worth, uh, even a little bit more. Not only will your plants be happier and thrive a lot better, but your watering can definitely be cut down if you're doing that. Um, another really great thing to add on top of the compost is worm castings. Worm castings works really, really well uh, because it almost acts like a natural systemic. So it's basically worm poop that the plant takes up and it adds an enzyme into the plant, which makes all the little sucking bugs like aphids and mealybugs and stuff like that not like the taste of your plant. So it's super healthy for your plant. It adds really good texture to your soil, which makes your watering process a lot easier and makes your soil retain the water that it needs, but not in an unhealthy way. So it's a really great thing to add to your garden. The next thing that you should do is mulch. Mulching is fantastic. It does so many different things. It's practically magic, and I don't really understand why everybody's not doing it all the time. Uh, when you're mulching your soil, you're gonna use something like a shredded cedar bark or a shredded redwood, and you're gonna add a thin layer on top, and that's really a great thing to do, especially after fall, once you've cleaned up all all the fall leaves you can mulch your soil and it'll make it perfect for spring and really really happy in the summer first off it cuts down the weeds so that's fantastic way less weeding for you uh, the other thing that's really great is it looks really pretty it makes all of your soil look very uniform it makes the garden look really planned and very very clean it also keeps the water in the soil when it's really hot but it also keeps the roots really nice and cool when it's really really hot um, when it gets really cold it does the opposite it actually insulates and makes the plants really happy so it regulates temperature it definitely helps with water it helps with weeds and it just looks great it's something everybody should be doing in their garden no matter what kind of garden you have a super established one a new one uh, something that you're putting new things into occasionally it's a really great thing to do and will really help your soil and make your plants really really happy so the fourth tip I have for you is reducing lawn space uh, lawn is really beautiful. We're all very used to having big lush green lawns here, uh, but it's really honestly a waste of water and a waste of energy and a waste of fertilizer if you really think about it. Basically, you're constantly fertilizing your lawn and watering your lawn just to cut it all down and throw all that green waste away. Uh, it's not really super necessary for most people. Um, unless you have dogs or you have kids that are playing sports on your lawn, it's really a nice idea to really pare down that lawn, maybe add a lawn alternative. There's all kinds of beautiful things we sell here uh, that don't require any kind of extra watering, fertilizing, or cutting down, or just add more garden space so you can enjoy the beauty of flowers and plants instead of just looking at a green lawn that's being pretty much wasteful uh, when it comes to all the extra fertilizer. The green waste is really something to think about too, because basically you're just cutting all that down and just throwing it away constantly. So it's really not a great thing to have a huge lawn unless you're really using it. Uh, it's so much nicer to have something pretty. You can add in water features, add in more trees for more shade, add in plants that attract the hummingbirds and the butterflies and make your garden seem more alive uh, with less waste. So if it's something that you can do in your garden, it's really a great way to reduce the water that we wind up using and just to be really clean and really green. So the last and final tip I have for you for creating a water-wise garden is keep your plants happy. If your plants are happy, they need less water, uh, they're less dramatic, uh, they're not gonna be collapsing on you all the time once you start cutting that water back. And by keeping your plants happy, what I mean is fertilizing, mulching, and composting, and keeping them well trimmed back and deadheaded. Uh, that's very, very important. Make sure you're fertilizing your plants. A well-fed plant needs a lot less water. Uh, a plant with great fertilizer, great compost, great mulching underneath, 
doesn't require that much from you, doesn't have a lot of bug problems, grows really nice and happy, keeping it deadheaded, keeps them flowering more. So that just means simply cutting back all the dead flowers, keeps your garden tidy and beautiful. So make sure you know what kind of plant you have uh, and that you're using the right fertilizer. And of course here at Rogers Gardens, we can tell you what to use for your plants, for the type of plants you have. We have all kinds of great videos that you can look through that talk about specific needs for things like blueberries and citrus and roses. Uh, so you can get all the things you need to make your plant really, really happy, cut down that water, use a lot less water, and know that you're doing something good for the environment and cutting back the water and being really water wise here in Southern California. So if you can do all of those tips that I've given you, you'll definitely have a much lusher, happier, low water garden that just looks absolutely beautiful year round. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I think being water wise is really important here in Southern California and a lot easier than most people think it will be. So if you just follow the simple tricks and tips, it'll be really, really simple to cut down the water in your garden. Uh, if you haven't already, sign up for our YouTube page. You can subscribe there and see all kinds of great videos, all the new stuff, look back through all the old stuff that we have there as well. Um, also, follow us on Facebook or on Instagram. We post lots of really beautiful pictures. You'll know all the stuff that's coming up here at Rogers Gardens, all the live streams and seminars. Um, also, if you sign up for our email list, you'll know all the stuff before everybody else does. So be well, be safe, and happy gardening.